Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an FPS battle horde game in Unity and welcome to episode 2. In this tutorial we are going to focus on bringing in some assets in the name of textures and we're going to convert them to materials and then get them actually on some of our game objects. And don't forget, click subscribe and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial to come in this series and indeed everything about game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we briefly touched upon assets last time and we know what they are. We know that they can be textures or they can be materials or they can be anything. So how do we bring in some assets that we can use within our game? Well, first things first, we should always keep things neat and tidy in the hierarchy and inside the project window. So in order to do that, let's go to our assets down here. Let's right click, create, and then click on folder. This folder will only contain textures, so let's call it textures. And inside this window, we now have the ability to drag and drop some textures, and textures can be any image format. So I have a couple of images right here that you can download from my website. If you head over there, go to Downloads and Assets and go to the FPS Horde, you can download them. Uh, just drag and drop them into Unity like so. And if you have trouble dragging and dropping into Unity, then what you might need to do is unzip the assets. Unity doesn't like it when you try to drag uh, anything from a zipped file. So just keep that in mind. So we have three textures that we can use. We have a dirt texture, a grass texture, and a stone texture. Now, how do we actually apply these to a game object and how can we manipulate them to look different to make them look nicer, to make them look cooler. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of the sphere that we have and I'm going to insert one more cube. So game object, 3D object, cube. Let's set this to 0, 0, 0. And let's actually explore the snap settings before we apply anything on. What are snap settings? Snap settings allow us to move objects at specific intervals. If we were to move this now, we'd see that all that's happening there is we are gradually moving to three decimal places. So let's undo that. What we want to do is move it specifically to one or two or three without actually having to do that manually. Well, we can go to edit, go down to snap settings right there. And you'll see move X, move Y, move Z. Yours may be set at 0.5, yours may be set at 1, yours may be something completely different. But what this means is that each of these, these three here, will move this game object one of those increments when you hold down control. So if we set that to 1, 1, 1 and close it, hold down control and then try moving that game object. You'll see it snaps at those intervals and we have a precise movement and position right there. So that's now five. So we can do that backwards. I generally like to keep my snap settings as 0 0.5. I feel it's a little bit more versatile than having it set as one. So let's set them all as 0 0.5 and close that little box. Now what we can do is we can apply these textures to these game objects. So I'm going to split that apart so we can see the difference. And now I'm going to hold my right mouse button and just move the camera around, hold the middle mouse wheel and just pan this way. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can add these textures to these objects. We can do it the quick and easy way. And the quick and easy way is dragging and dropping in the scene view. Now, hopefully you may have noticed an extra folder has appeared called materials. The reason for that is that textures don't get applied to game objects. They get applied to a material and then it is the material that is then applied to a game object. So if we select this cube right here, let's go over here where it says cube in the hierarchy. Let's right click, and rename. Let's call this grass cube. Over here in the inspector panel, you'll see we have something called shader. This is actually the material. It doesn't say anywhere here that it is a material. However, this little circle icon will dictate the fact it is a material, even though it says shader there. 
Let's press the little arrow there and explain why it says shader there. A shader is a way of adding effects to a material. Now for, well, safety's sake, we'll say, let's keep it as standard for now, but shaders are something we will deal with later on in the series because we can come up with some awesome effects with shaders. But for now, let's stick with standard, which is perfectly fine. So on the material itself here in the inspector panel, we have a couple of different options. I'm not going to go through them all because some of them are a little bit irrelevant at this point because we just want to get a game up and running as soon as possible and then learn from there, don't we? So the albedo is the image of the texture itself. If we select it here, it will highlight yellow wherever it is in our project window. We can also change the default color of it. Just keep in mind that white means it's the original color. Black just means it's well, just black. We can also change it from red, yellow, all the different colors of the rainbow, like so. However, just remember that because it is originally green, the green will all, it'll always have a bit of a green tint one way or another. If you've done this, you can just reset it back to white. Next, we have the metallic view. And if we move the slider, we can see how much it changes. It looks rather metallic now if I zoom in. Same with the smoothness. You can play around with that and you can see it kind of starts reflecting a little bit. The reflection occurs because of the light. Light and materials are important to a game's design and image, but we'll get around to combining the two probably next tutorial, I think, because there is so much to deal with when it comes to lighting. Uh, we could change the source as well to albedo alpha. I guess it depends on what kind of look you want to go for with your material. Now at the moment it doesn't look too bad but it looks kind of flat and there is a way around that to give it a bit more bumpiness a bit more something to it and that's called something like a normal map now a normal map is something which kind of well all them years ago when i first started developing i wasn't sure what a normal map was uh it's only when i started experimenting that i found out you could do some awesome things with a normal map now you can't just apply a normal map texture onto a material like that because it'll look a little bit well look at it it's a bit daft isn't it that's not how grass looks so what you need to do is take the texture that you have hold control and press d to duplicate it we can ignore that the reason that's happened is because i've applied uh, a texture to a normal map and i shouldn't have done that was just a demonstration so don't worry about that if you get that error just click ignore make sure you don't click fix because it will set the original texture to a normal map and then make the whole thing look silly, even sillier. So that texture now, rename to grass001 underscore n. The n just stands for normal map. And over here in the inspector panel, you can see loads of different options, but what we want to go for is texture type, change it to normal map, and then click apply. And there are theoretically two types of normal map. You've got a normal map as it is now and a grayscale. I'll show you the difference now. If we select our object here and then drag and drop that normal map onto that section there where it's complaining about it right now, you'll see that that changes. And that does look kind of cool, a little bit more texture to it, a little bit bumpier. And we can change the intensity of the normal map by selecting this section here, this invisible section with the two arrows and we can increase or decrease. And you should be able to see just how much of an impact it's having on that cube. So if I set it back to one, select the normal map again, and then click on create from grayscale, you'll see a bumpiness factor come up. Let's keep it as 0.25 and click apply. And you can see now it becomes rough, it becomes gritty. And we can actually use that to our advantage because on the material here in the uh, inspector panel, we can change it to 0.2 or maybe 0.4. And we should be able to see the bumpiness and roughness starting to appear on that. Now, it's probably not the best thing for grass. So let's try it with some stone on this cube. I know I've missed a couple of these things off, but don't worry. Don't worry at all. Eventually, at some point in the series, we'll probably deal with everything. But like I said, we just want to get the basics up and running so we can really get ourselves into gear and start building. So we actually dragged and dropped that texture onto the object itself well let's do it a different way let's go to the materials folder and you'll see that that's what it created for the grass by default let's right click create and then out of all that menu about a third of the way down you'll have material so let's call this material 
dirt. In fact, no, stone we were going to say, wasn't it? So stone, mat. Obviously, mat short for material. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it here in the inspector panel, go to textures, and then drag and drop that stone onto the albedo. So this is how we create a material manually. So back on the material, we can actually drag and drop that onto the game object. Remember, we can always play around with that normal map. So let's go to textures again. Let's hold control, press D on the stone. Let's change it to stone 001 underscore N. And then let's set texture type, normal map, and click grayscale, and click apply. And finally, if we go to the material, we just need to add the normal map there. Now we have dragged and dropped it over there. So let's actually click the little button next to it and let's find it and select it. Now this actually looks kind of like stone would be. It looks a little bit more stony than you would, well, more than that looks grassy at least. So you just have to be mindful when developing these sort of things that the quality and the idealistic view of what you are doing. For example, this kind of material, uh, the normal map and the metallicness on grass probably won't work, but it will do on stone and gravel. You could always further develop this and change the metallic a little bit up, change the smoothness all the way down, all the way up, whatever, change it to albedo, um, increase the metallic, decrease the smoothness. Just play around with it. Play around with it how you want it to look. I guess it's all down to you because it is your game at the end of the day. You can also increase the normal map to, let's say, 3 or decrease it, minus 2. It just depends how you want your game to be visually. So I'm going to keep it as 1 for now. A couple of other things here. Uh, height map, we don't really need a height map for anything we're dealing with right now. That's a little bit further on. Same with occlusion. Detail mass, that's something a bit further on from what we're doing. We're just creating these things right now. Same with emission. You don't necessarily have to have that ticked because it, doesn't, it won't do a massive amount at the moment with the way we have things set up. Tiling, however, is a way of showing the same texture repeated. So for example, if we change this to 2 by 2, what's happening here is we have one texture here, one texture here, another texture here, and another texture here. So there's four textures on there because it's 2 by 2. So to show how that actually gives better effects, Let's take this cube, hold control, press D, duplicate it, and let's bring it across using the snap settings again, and let's increase the scale to two by two by two. So now it looks better than what it did because, and bear with me on this one, it is to scale on the object. It looks a little bit condensed there, but that's because that object is smaller. If we were to revert it to its original, of one by one you would see that it looks normal there now however it's stretched across this huge cube here so when developing these materials just be mindful about how you're doing it and the relative size on the object itself because if we were to take this and it would be i don't know let's say 20 by 20 by 20 and zoom out it will look rather stretched and distorted so let's go to our game view and in fact, let's sort our camera out so we can see things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera and move it backwards, probably to about there. And let's go on game. And we can see the stretched kind of texture appearing on that huge cube. This is where the scaling would come in handy. So if we change the scale to 10 by 10, oh, in the correct place, Jimmy, 10 by 10. It's a little bit better. It looks uh, more like what it should be rather than uh, a big stretched mess. And I think 10 by 10 is probably too much. So let's try two by two. So it's not quite as bad. Just keep that in mind when you're dealing with textures on the material and the stretch of it. So what I would recommend now, guys, is I'd say this is probably the last uh, tutorial with the real basic, basic stuff that we've got going on. Uh, I, th I think from here on in, it's going to get kind of cooler. We've started getting visuals in our game by the way of textures. And remember, it is just as simple as dragging and dropping sometimes. Just see what you can do. So what I would recommend is play around with these textures. 
mess around with the objects, their materials, do what you need to do. And if, if you really, really want to, check out the shaders. I will get around to shaders at some point, but by all means, check them out. See what kind of weird, wonderful things you can come up with, because there is a lot to play around with when it comes to shaders. So, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how lighting has an impact on the scene itself and we're also going to start taking a look at terrain and i'll explain more what terrain is but it is vital to our game design at this point so until that next tutorial guys thank you very much for watching